Hey folks, JD here, and today, uh, well, basically, it's a little bit of a different video. We're going to be testing out this XTC3D. Now, as the start of the video said, this is a very, very dangerous chemical compound, and you have to take proper safety precautions. So during this video, I'm going to be wearing my nitrile gloves, I'm going to be wearing my respirator, I'm going to be wearing some safety goggles, so I've taken my glasses off, uh, and I've got an air purifier here as well, as well as both windows behind me are open wide. Now, why am I taking this much precaution for something to do with a 3D print? Well, basically, what XTC 3D does, or what it, what it, what it says it's going to do, is it's going to take your standard 3D print and it's going to make it nice and smooth. Not by melt, melting the plastic, but just by layering itself, painting it on, and then hopefully it creates a nice little barrier between the XTC 3D and between the print and then it creates this really nice texture that gives the impression of this being a particular one solid piece rather than multiple layers. Now this is a little Iron Man helmet that I've printed on my Ender 5 Plus behind me. I'm really quite happy with it. It's come out really, really, really well. Now as you can see, there's no particular lines, not light. I'm trying to catch the light. This lighting in this room is awful. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm trying to catch the lines so you can see. It's actually come out really well. I'm really happy with it. This is on medium quality. Uh, so what I want to try and do now is I want to try and uncover it in XTC 3D and see exactly what it looks like. Now because this is a chemical compound, what you have to do is you have to mix it. So you have two parts of one to one part of another. You mix it in an appropriate um, an appropriate thing. So I'm using a ceramic mug. I'm not using plastic and I'm not using glass because quite literally when you mix these two these two uh, chemicals together it does create an exothermic reaction so there is going to be a lot of heat and probably quite a noxious smell hence these given off by that uh, th those two products mixing. Now having respiratory disease I am, this is why I'm choosing to wear these. I also wear the same ones for when I'm, when I'm airbrushing. So I know these particular filters pick up very fine particles. So they should be okay for something like this as well. Now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix everything. I'm going to get it into a nice paste. And then I'm just going to paste it on very, very nicely. So we shouldn't have any issues there at all. So I've got everything ready, I think. And next thing now is just to turn this camera around, get everything mixed in. Right then, so I've got the microphone pushed up as much as I can against this uh, this mask. So the audio might be a little bit strange, but essentially there's not much I can do about that because I value my lungs, so therefore I'm not going to do this without recording, uh, without actually wearing a mask. So, this is what we have. So we have in the packet, in the bag, you get your stirrer. You get your applier, uh, as well as you get compound A, I think this is, compound B, and then compound A. So, going off the manual, which I have got to my left, and I am going off it, is two parts A to one part B. So part A, so sorry about the hands everywhere for a second. So let's just give this a bit of a shake. And then I don't think there's anything to come off, not by look of it. It just says press, so I'm pressing it. So it says... Two parts A to one part B. So I'm going to take a drop to be one part. That's how I usually unscientifically measure paint. Come on. Oh, I can just feel it. So one, two. That's two parts there. I'm going to be careful because there's a little bit of it on the outside there. So two parts of that. As you can see in the bottom there. To one part of this. Oh, there we go. Probably a little bit more than one part. So it's in the bottom there. Now what I'm going to do is mix it together until it forms quite the paste. Keep on mixing. Oh, this is... This is getting a little... I can, there's definitely a little smell there. And then I'm going to keep on mixing, going over itself. I'm not going to mix a lot because, quite literally, I don't have a very big print. So if I was doing something like my Terminator heads or some of the other models that I've modelled myself, which you'll see in time, then I'd probably use something a little bit different and probably a little bit more. That's quite... I've got to be careful as well because this doesn't have a very long time. I think it has a, a 10 or 15 minute set time. So I want to make sure that what I've got going on here is enough 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to use my little paintbrush I've got here. And we are going to attempt to see how this goes. Now I'm not putting a lot on, I'm just putting enough on. If I run out of more, I can mix more, but I'm not going to mix more than what I should need. And I'm also going to mine my fingers, I'm going to mine the gloves. I'm not being very precious with how I apply this. Now the drying time for this is going to be four hours, it reckons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now switch that onto there. How much have I got left in there? I've got quite a bit in there, that's okay. I'm going to hold his, uh, his sides there and I'm just going to paint him on a bit more. Trying to get it as uniform and as level as I can. It's quite difficult because it's going on like varnish. It's really very, very, very thick. If this comes in contact with your hands, as usual, as with resin and as with anything, wash it off immediately. I can't really say there's a lot of a smell. My eyes are stinging a bit. So I think, oh, should we go in the other way then? That's me not concentrating. My eyes are stinging a little bit. Um, but I don't know if that is so, sort of psychosomatic. Just because it said it would in the manual. It doesn't really... I haven't really mixed a lot. Sorry about the out camera angles, folks. They're pretty awful. And my hands are everywhere, so really sorry about that. There we go. So... Let me just see that I've coated this one correctly. Almost. Almost. So I'm going to hold it at the bottom if I can. I should have really used my turntable for this. But I didn't want to get this stuff all over my turntable. It's on my gloves as you can see. But it's not having an adverse effect. At the second I can't feel it going through to my skin. So that's okay. Only one bit remaining. And that is his chin. So there we go. So now I leave it to set. There we go. Take these off straight away. There we are. Wrap them up in a ball. Okay. Let me take my mask off. Oh. Right, okay, so, quite literally, what have I done? Well, I've coated the Iron Man mask in this compound. So let me just turn this camera a little bit. Sorry, folks, this is going to be very unprofessional. But let me um, just zoom in a little bit there. So you can see the Iron Man mask is covered totally in that X XTC3D. And um, there's... A little bit left in the bottom there. Not a lot, but I can wash that out. Now, it says to leave it for four hours. And then, from that point then, use a very, very, very light sandpaper. And just give it a little sanding over. To take this nice, very, this nice gloss uh, finish into a matte finish. Once you've done that, it might look a little bit like that. So this is one that I did the other day. And then sandpapered, uh, not very, not a lot, but sandpapered maybe for about two and a half minutes. So just basically going over it very gently. You can see it's very dull. There's no sort of very, uh, there's, there's no light to it at all. So, and it, and it looks okay, it looks all right. Um, I'll be happy to paint that up and see exactly how that looks uh, when it's all painted. If it does actually look any better than just the standard sort of uh, lined prints. So anyway, that's the Iron Man helmet completely done. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to now clean up all this mess and uh, I should be able to show you what it's like in a little while. So join me then, folks. Okay then, folks. So now over 12 hours has passed. It's now the next day and I'm going to take a look at this. So one thing that is very apparent with since this XTC 3D has been applied, you can see all the individual lines now, whereas previously I couldn't. So now what you've got to do is very gently file off the first few layers 
of the XTC 3D. Now this may take a little bit of time in order to, to do this. There we go. And then when you when you're filing that off, what it's actually doing is removing those lines as well. So it's going to take a little bit in order to get this print ready because I've got to get rid of as much of the XTC 3D as I possibly can. And I've just cut off a little bit of paper here but I may need a bit more. And what you're meant to be left with is pretty much no XTC, XTC 3D but essentially a nice layer where you can... Hang on. A nice layer where you can you can actually apply the uh, the paint now I've got to go over this a lot more but you can see here at the back when it's starting to get rid of those lines see if I just get this little dibber see where the shadow is cast there so there's lines gone there 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 so it is going to be a long process but essentially when that is all done I should be left with a, a very smooth looking print like that Wow that's lovely. Okay, I can still see some lines here, there, 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 and working across horizontally that way as well. But still, I get the idea. I get what, 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 what needs to be achieved. But in order to achieve it, it does take quite a bit of work in order to achieve that finished product. That finished surface, rather. But at the same time, it also helps to protect your model, too. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. You can see here it is getting rid of the lines. It's making it all nice. There we are. That's a perfect comparison. See there? That's where the XTC still is. It's nice and shiny. This is where it's coming off. So you can see the lines here and you can't see the lines there as much. See in the middle there? So that's that that's basically the idea. And then once you've done all that, then you can you you, you can prime it and then you can paint it. Uh, but essentially, I'm going to keep at this for a little while and see exactly what sort of surface I can get from it. And I'll chime in in the next couple of seconds. Okay then, friends. So I have been at it with a 120 green and a 180 green. And essentially, this isn't going to come across well in the video. But that is ridiculously smooth. Literally. So ridiculously smooth it is unbelievable i haven't done down here a lot but i focused on the top here on it on, on on his head plate here and it's taken me about six minutes to get that and it is beautifully smooth i mean if i run my finger down it you can't hear do -ga -do -ga -do -ga -do through as you would go in through all the different layers it is just really nice and really smooth now i started to do it at the back i think essentially i've learned a lot about from this I've learned that A, doing these small models like this, as you can see, the, the, the shining bits are the bits where the XTC 3D is still, still are. But what I have learned is it takes quite a bit of effort to get that done, to, to get it filed down. Um, I think in hindsight I should have used my Dremel, but I didn't want to eat too much into the, into the PLA and I didn't want to change the shape or get rid of any of the details. Now, also... This bit here, I didn't put enough XTC 3D, so it is, it feels beautifully smooth, but you can still see the, the, the circles there of the, see, there we go, you can still see the circles where the PLA was laid, but I think when this is fully painted, this is going to come out absolutely stunning. So I'm, I'm still on the fence about XTC 3D for the second, I think to be perfectly honest with you, it's probably a good idea to do it. Uh, and then just to smooth out your prints as much as possible before you apply the paint so you can get the best finish on them. So I'm going to keep doing this. So I've done this on this helmet. I've done it on the boat I showed you earlier. Uh, so I think from here on, I'm going to paint this up and then see exactly how that looks. But that's going to be in a separate video as in part two to this one, maybe. Uh, and essentially, once I've done that, you should see it. And I'm hoping it's going to be very good. Uh, but so far, the the the... I'm very, very surprised in a very positive way about how lovely and smooth this is. It feels beautiful. It really does. It has got rid of all of the, the lumpy bumpiness of the PLA and it feels so incredibly smooth, apart from the top. I should have lathered on the, the XTC 3D there. That's my fault.
but the rest of it here just feels absolutely fantastic. Right, so I'm going to paint it up and I'll let you know in a couple of minutes what it looks like. Okay, and here's the end result. So this is just a test. This, this is only something I wanted to see how XTC CD, how XTC 3D would do. Um, so here you can see at the top, right? So here I filed it down. Uh, not perfectly, obviously there's a couple of bobbles. But here you can see the XTC 3D. And here you can see where I haven't filed it. So you can see the difference already. Standard, no XTC filing, uh, and or application or proper application. And then at the top here you can see proper XTC 3D application and uh, proper sanding down. So the difference is actually night and day. So it's a lot of work to get this like this. And I imagine it would be even more work to get it without these little bobbles and actually having a proper a proper surface. But as I said, the shell of this is really, really thin. So I didn't want to go too hard and actually wear a hole in the shell. So that, that's why I left all these bobbles here as well. But you can see the difference there and there straight away, straight away. No problem whatsoever. So I think with this being applied to the correct model with a correct infill and correct shell strength, you could actually get a really nice, really nice finish job on it. I mean, the rest of it is actually okay. Um, I haven't actually worked very hard on this just simply because I wanted to just have an example of what it was like. So, so far, I think XTC 3D is kind of worth it if it's on the right model. If it's on something like this or a Terminator head, then I, I or say a Venom bust or a Charmander, I would say probably don't bother. If you're doing like say a, a full size helmet, like I'm actually printing behind me now, I'm gonna fully apply this and fully uh, get rid, of, sand it all off using my Dremel and see exactly how good that does. But to be fair, it does what it says in the tin. It does uh, smooth out prints, and it certainly has there. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite impressed with that, to be honest. Next is a proper application on a proper model that I'm going to keep, because uh, this is just a test. So uh, yeah, but so far, pretty happy with that. All right, my friends, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening, my friends. I am JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and ring that bell too. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy painting.